Anyway, in this video, I wanted to do something a little different, a little, uh, a little, uh, I guess fun, something that, you know, I wouldn't recommend to anybody, but I just out of, from my, out of my own curiosity, I wanted to check it out. I wanted to see how it would work out. So I just bought, I just bought four of these, uh, bipolar uh, surround speakers for the new theater. I got them on sale. They were $200 each. They're usually like $400. So I got them at 50% off. So I saw the, I saw the sale and I couldn't pass them up knowing that I'd probably be using my definitive technology speakers. And as a, uh, again, these speakers have, you know, they're bipolar. They have the exact same, they have um, drivers on both sides of the speaker at an, at angles to kind of give more, um, spread of information especially if you have like two rows or something i'm going to use a set of these speakers per row of seats that i'm going to have and i think it's going to work really well so, and i have a couple of reasons for that. i also wanted to just hook these up in my rec room and just test them out and see how they did as two channels set up and take some measurements but i was especially like interested in the bass uh how much they produce you know they do have two four inch drivers and they're ported on one side so i figured maybe uh well let's just put it this way definitive technology claims about 40 hertz that they dip down to i wouldn't say it's very close to that at all uh, i would say closer to like 60 hertz where well, i already did measurements of all these i already kind of unboxed them i actually have these speakers uh in this very room i've been using them for close to eight years that it's the same speaker they just have a the older style of the definitive logo and i kind of wanted to keep that nice theater look uh that that bipolars have it just reminds me of a theater speaker, you know, you have, if you have mono poles, it's just like, just, it was either that or just get, uh, I was going to go with definitive or golden ear speakers. And, you know, there was a side of me that was, that wanted to try out mono poles for a change, but again, $200 per speaker, I couldn't pass it up given that I'm, the new theater is very ambitious and it's going to cost a lot of money. So I got to really play it easy with budget here. I'm uh, very happy with my current setup, so I think I'm going to just employ a lot of the speakers that I currently have in the new theater and it should work out really well. I just got these in. Uh, I saw a sale on these for brand new bipolar speakers from Definitive Technology that match the ones that I've been using for almost eight years or about eight years now and then personally I think I've done a really good job. Uh, I'm not going to do like a full on uh, unboxing, but I got these for $200 each. Um, quite a steal, I think. Uh, these are definitely a steal. This is kind of bringing me back. I remember unboxing these when I bought them originally. But essentially, these are, just, these are the same speakers that I have now, except. The logo has changed. So I got four of these brand new for $800 total. Um, probably, I would say arguably one of the better deals that I've gotten on speakers. So these are really nice. Uh, nice binding post there. Uh, keyhole, that's how, I, that's how I've been using them, honestly. Yeah, a little, I've just been using the keyhole here. Yeah, let's, uh, let's talk about them. So these are currently my surround speakers that I use uh, in my main home theater and I'm actually hoping to use, so I actually just bought another uh, set, another two sets of these. So I'm going to be using these, uh, another four of these speakers in my new theater. And I think the reason why I went with them, number one, I, I think these have been really great. Uh, they've been very flexible, uh, giving a, a very large spread of information for both rows of seats, even though I primarily sit 99% of the time in the rear row, but if you're sitting in the if you're sitting in the first row, you still get pretty good uh, uh, surround sound information. I mounted these kind of high in this theater. Uh, in the new theater, I'm going to be going a little lower uh, because uh, I I installed these before the uh, the Ad, uh, before Atmos was a thing, and back then it was recommended to get uh, to install your surround speakers a little higher. And then, uh, number one for to you know it uh, it allows the speaker to to like uh, beam its sound over any obstructions like your chairs or something, but it also allows um, it kind of gives you a little more of uh, you know height ambiance like back before Atmos 
it was, you know, it was considered good to have your surrounds a little higher than head than ear height. Um, these are about, I, I would say about six inches higher than I would have put them in the new theater. I think in the new theater, they're going to be probably something like that, that about that high. Um, but yeah, uh, the speakers have been great. So I'm going to use them in the new theater again. The reason why I like bipolar speakers for, uh, to be used as surrounds is because, uh, if you're, if you have a monopole speaker and you have the speaker right in line with the, with the, a row, with a, one of your row seats, you're gonna have, you're gonna be right on axis for the tweeter. Well, for both drivers, but mostly the tweeter. So this tweeter's gonna be beaming sound directly into your ear, right? So that can be somewhat unpleasant for that person and uh, a little jarring, let's say. It's gonna take you out of the moment. But a bipolar speaker, the speaker, the tweeters are going like to each side, right? So when this, the sound that's gonna be coming to that person is gonna be, is gonna be off axis sound. So it's not gonna be as strong. Each little tweeter has waveguides. So they're probably, you know, they're probably engineered to to spread the tweeter sound pretty pretty evenly. Another one of the benefits of using these speakers is if you have, let's say you're going, I'm, I'm going to have two sets of surround speakers in the new theater, and this theater I only have one set of surround speakers. But if but it's as you can see, it's sort of straddling, it's sort of straddling. It's like in the middle of the two rows of seats that I have here. So. Um, but again, two so you got two drivers here, so it's driving, so it's sending the information pretty evenly to both to both rows. But uh, a lot of people can argue that when you do that, um, you're almost putting this speaker the when the when the surround speaker the surround speaker is technically supposed to be right right next to you. I couldn't do that in this room because I have a wall over there. It just this room is in a regular has, is in a regular shape. It's not it's just not ideal. Uh, Basically, when you when you when you have a home theater, you gotta you gotta use what you have. Um, so I couldn't I couldn't put the surround speaker right up again right right on axis of the back row. But uh, this is probably the second best thing. That's why I went with bipolar, so the sound would spread out better to both rows. And and to be honest, it's worked worked out well. I just wanted to compare and contrast. Uh, obviously, they were the same exact speaker, except the logo has changed. Uh, honestly, the logo is probably a little lighter the font or whatever it's like a really light gray or dark gray i should say similar to here but this one kind of stands out a little more so i kind of i might like actually like the new logo more it's a little understated there just the simple d and a period the drivers are the same they're just a little cleaner and newer and same tweeter design same port design port is always on the left here um dual grills Really great package, 200 bucks. Really, really happy. Another reason why I like these speakers so much, and you can already see it, it's it's the ease of installation. You don't need to you don't need to buy a bracket. You can just use the little keyhole. Maybe if you really wanted to go the extra mile, get a pair of get a little bit of those rubber sticky pads here for the bottom here, so so maybe it absorbs the sound. I think I did do that at one point, and uh, yeah, super easy to use, super easy to install. Just you know get you know hang them on the wall like you would a picture pretty much. And they set, they're they nice and flush against the wall they, and they look like they belong in a movie theater, which I like. I wanna take them out and put install them in my uh, rec room and measure them and see how they perform as stereo speakers. And that'll kind of give me an idea of how they would work as surround speakers, even though I have been using them for eight years and I've been quite happy with them. I don't know how, I don't know how well it's gonna sound, but it looks pretty cool. I don't know, it makes me think of the Bose 901s, you know, because they had like the, the angled, uh, the backs of the of the Bose 901s were like angled in the back and you had the four, you know, uh, four, I think three inch drivers on each side and then just one in the middle in the front. So mostly reflective ener uh, energy, but this is uh, kind of giving me that vibe in a way. Again, don't know if it's gonna look, sound good, but it looks really cool. I set up the speakers uh, in my rec room and I hooked them up. I listened to some tunes. Oh, well, I listened to them without without subs. Obviously, they did feel a little anemic uh, on the bass end. They just didn't have a lot of low end. I had to put them. I, I put them as close to the wall as I could, and that helped a tiny bit. But they really just don't have a lot of bass. Uh, I would right now. I'm just going to tell you. I would cross these over at 80 hertz. No, no big deal. I think at 80 hertz, they're, they're producing a decent amount of bass. They, there's another bump at about 60 hertz and a very small bump in the mid 40s, but 
Uh, around 60 is really, they're really, you really got to push them to get to 60 hertz. As far as listening to them in like stereo, as a stereo pair of speakers, it was interesting to say the least. I thought, for one, they surprised me. They sounded pretty good. They were very forward. They actually image really well. I guess it has to do with the fact that the, the baffle of the speaker, you kind of have one, you got one uh, one set of one set of drivers kind of towed into your listening position really well, making, and I guess they helping it helping them image very well. But at the same time, since you had another the other set of speakers kind of like bouncing off the walls and stuff, you kind of I felt like I had a very uh, enveloping sound signature. When I looked at them, it, they kind of reminded me of the Bose 901 speakers, which are famous. But the speaker, most of these drivers are in the back of the speaker, so. And they, well, they had three inch drivers, nine three inch drivers, and most of the drivers were in the back of the speaker and they were at an, at an angle. It was supposed to mimic the, like the sound of like a, of a concert hall, which most of the sound is supposed to be reflected sound. Believe it or not, I actually did turn them just to see if they sounded okay, like to sort of mimic like what the, what the Bose 901s did. I turned them backwards so, th so the front of the speaker is pointing at the wall. And believe it or not, they actually sounded okay. Would I recommend you doing that? No, don't do not do that. The treble really dropped out. That's why uh, Bose kept one of the drivers in the front. Reflecting sound just takes away a lot of the energy, especially with treble. So uh, you're def that's why Bose kept one of the, one driver in the front, but whatever. Uh, I did do that just to, just to goof around and it was totally, don't do that. Don't put the speakers backwards. But anyway, they look, they look bad doing that. But when I had them front facing, of course, uh, again, image very well, very, very open sound signature. I felt like not everything was positive though. They were fatiguing uh, at higher volumes. I felt like I had to crank it down a bit. I was like, damn, that, it, you know, they were pretty forward speakers, pretty fatiguing, a lot of, a lot of trouble. Probably has something to do with the fact that they have two, two tweeters. So there's a lot of trouble, a lot of higher end energy. Again, I did take measurements of these and they actually measured okay. Uh, except for the fact that they're they're pretty fall, they fall pl pretty flat on bass the bass level. I uh, I listened to them on my Macintosh with no subs. Then I then I put them on my Onkyo receiver with subs and stereo, and that's where they shined really well. Uh, honestly, you could do a lot worse than a pair of these. If you find yourself, if you find a pair of these for real cheap and you want to get something interesting in your room, you could do worse. Honestly, uh, but you need to have a sub. Uh, you don't have a sub, you're gonna be missing out a lot. Uh, it's not gonna sound very good, honestly. I would still recommend just getting normal bookshelf speakers, but it, again, if you wanna have something different and something goofy looking and, and fun, you could do worse than having a pair of these in your in your stereo. So that's my opinion. Uh, I, I thought it was a fun, fun exercise to do. Just put, why don't I just put a pair of surround speakers and use them as a stereo set of speakers? And I had them anyway, so I say I say, why not? found this entertaining enjoyable etc be really great if you can give this a thumbs up consider subscribing to the channel let me know if you have any questions about the speakers i'll see you in the next one